What if time itself could end? Not just your life, not just the world, but the very ticking of existence, the forward flow we all take for granted suddenly, gone. It sounds impossible, almost like a bad sci-fi twist, but some of the greatest minds in physics are convinced it's more than possible. It's inevitable. And if they're right, what comes after the end of time might be stranger and scarier than anything we've ever imagined. We like to think of time as a constant, steady rhythm, like the beat of a drum. Sunrise, sunset, seasons passing, clocks ticking. But in physics, time is far from rigid. Einstein's theory of relativity shattered the idea of a universal clock. Time can slow down, speed up, and even stretch out depending on where you are and how fast you're moving. Near a massive planet or deep inside a gravitational well, time literally runs slower than it does for someone far away from that gravity. Astronauts on the International Space Station age just a little bit slower than we do on Earth. Not by much, but enough to prove time isn't fixed. That alone should be enough to blow our minds. But here's the real kicker. Physics doesn't guarantee that time keeps going forever. In fact, under extreme conditions, time itself might stop. And those extreme conditions, they're not just in theory. They already exist in our universe. The word singularity sounds mysterious, almost like something from a black ops experiment, but in physics, it's terrifyingly real. A singularity is a place where the laws of physics break down. Our equations simply stop making sense. Time and space themselves lose meaning. The two biggest examples, the very beginning of the universe, the Big Bang and the center of a black hole. In both cases, time as we know it seems to hit a wall. Inside a black hole's core, space and time are warped so severely that the forward march of seconds just stops. Physicists call this the end of time for anything that crosses the event horizon. No escape, no rewinding, no fast forward. The scary part is that if the universe ever collapses in on itself, something scientists once thought was likely this same kind of singularity could swallow everything, ending the cosmic story once and for all. But some thinkers believe this end isn't an end at all. There's a branch of physics that's not ready to give up on time, quantum gravity. Quantum gravity tries to merge Einstein's relativity with quantum mechanics, the two big but often conflicting theories of the universe. And if it's right, singularities might not be the end of time. They might be a bridge. One idea gaining attention is the big bounce. The concept that the universe doesn't just explode into being once, but cycles through endless expansions and contractions. The end is just the beginning of the next cycle. And then there's Sir Roger Penrose, a Nobel Prize winning physicist who's proposed something even stranger conformal cyclic cosmology, or CCC. In Penrose's vision, the universe will eventually become so stretched out that all matter decays, leaving only massless particles like photons. Without mass, there's no concept of a clock. Time loses all meaning. And in that timeless state, the universe naturally transitions into a brand new Big Bang. In other words, the end of time simply becomes the start of time again. It's not just recycling, it's cosmic reincarnation. But the question isn't just about what science says. Philosophers have been wrestling with the end of time for centuries. The idea that time could just stop is deeply unsettling. And some of history's greatest thinkers flat out rejected it. Kant argued that time was a necessary framework for our understanding of reality. It couldn't simply vanish. Aristotle saw time as an infinite continuum, always flowing, without a true beginning or end. Philosophers point out that saying time ends is a contradiction because the very concept of ending is a moment in time. If there's no time, there's no after to talk about. But modern physics isn't bound by our human comfort zones. It doesn't care if an idea feels wrong. It only cares if the math works. And the math keeps pointing us toward possibilities where time's flow could be interrupted, reset, or even erased entirely. And Penrose? He's not done shaking things up yet. 
Sir Roger Penrose isn't the kind of scientist to throw around wild ideas without evidence, and he claims to have found hints that our universe has already died and been reborn before. By studying patterns in the cosmic microwave background, the faint radiation left over from the Big Bang, Penrose says he's found strange ring patterns that might be the last fingerprints of black holes from a previous universe. If he's right, these ancient imprints are proof that the end of time isn't a cliff, it's a doorway. And here's where things get strange. In Penrose's CCC model, once all matter decays and the universe is filled only with massless particles, there's no longer a difference between before and after. Without clocks, without change, time loses, meaning entirely. Then, almost as if the universe forgets it ever existed, the conditions become right for another Big Bang and a brand new era of time begins. To us, it would look like the total erasure of reality, but to the cosmos, it's just business as usual. While Penrose focuses on cycles, String theorists explore something even more radical. Maybe time is just one coordinate in a vast, higher dimensional reality, and it's not as fundamental as we think. String theory proposes that everything in our universe is made from tiny vibrating strings of energy existing in more than the three dimensions of space we can see. In some models, time isn't a basic ingredient of reality. It's a side effect of how we, as conscious beings, perceive changes in those higher dimensions. That means time could emerge in some universes and not exist at all in others. And if our universe's time ever ends, it might still exist in a bigger multiverse framework that goes on without us. Think of it like a character in a video game. Inside the game, there's a clock ticking down. But outside the game, in the real world, that timer means nothing. If the game universe ends, the larger reality just keeps going. If time ended tomorrow, would you even notice? Surprisingly, the answer might be no at least, not in the way you expect. Most physicists agree that the end of time wouldn't feel like an explosion or a sudden blackout. Instead, it would feel like nothing at all. Without time, there's no sequence of events, no moments passing, no cause and effect. If you've ever been under anesthesia and then suddenly woke up with no sense of the gap in between, that's a faint hint of what no time might feel like, except this time, there's no waking up. It's not death. It's not sleep. It's the absence of any change whatsoever. And that's what makes the concept so unnerving. We can't imagine it, because imagination itself depends on time. You might wonder why should we even care if time could end, especially if it's trillions of years away, because the end of time forces us to rethink everything about existence, meaning, and what it means to be real. If time is temporary, then our universe is temporary. And if our universe is temporary, what comes after might be even more important than what's happening now. It also opens the door to one of the biggest questions humanity has ever faced. If time has a beginning and an end, does something or someone exist outside of it? Physicists don't have an answer. Philosophers have been arguing about it for centuries. And for now, all we can do is keep looking for clues. Time often feels like the one constant in our lives, an invisible current carrying us forward from the moment we're born until the day we die. We schedule our lives by it, measure our memories with it, and even define our identities through the sequence of events that shape us. But what if that current isn't endless? What if, somewhere far ahead, it simply stops? For scientists, like Roger Penrose, the end of time isn't just a theoretical curiosity, it's a window into the deeper architecture of reality. If time has an expiration date, then it was never the ultimate framework we thought it was. Instead, it may be part of a much larger cosmic cycle, or an even greater multiverse, where time is just one possible feature of existence. The implications are staggering. If time can end, then so can everything we know our stars, our galaxies, even the laws of physics we hold sacred. And yet, in that ending, there could also be a beginning. The universe might not die in the way we fear, but instead reset, renew, or transform into something entirely beyond our comprehension. 
Philosophically, it challenges us to think about our more place in the cosmos. If time is temporary, does meaning come from what we do within it or from what might lie beyond it? Could there be realms or states of existence where time doesn't flow at all, yet life in some form continues? Perhaps the scariest part is that we'll never truly be able to imagine the end of time because imagination itself requires time to exist. If the clock stops, there's no awareness of it. Stopping, no transition, no goodbye. One moment, reality is here. And in the very next, there's no next at all. And yet, maybe that's the point. The end of time doesn't have to be seen as a terrifying void, but as part of the same grand story that brought everything into being. In one chapter, time begins. In another, it ends. And somewhere, perhaps in an entirely different reality, a brand new chapter begins to unfold. If Penrose's theories, string theory, and multiverse ideas are correct, then when time ends for us, it may still be just getting started somewhere else. And maybe just, maybe what lies beyond time will be even stranger, more beautiful, and more mysterious than anything we've ever known.